What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a wonderful day. Today we've got some kind of odd but interesting things to do on the homestead. I really didn't know what to title this video, but I think it should be fun. So first I want to check on our greenhouse, just do a little quick check, see how those Ruiz Oakry seeds are doing. They've been planted about four or five days now. Then we need to plant this. And this may look like a dog bone, but it isn't. And then we're going to plant this. And then we're going to check on our Brussels sprouts, see how they're doing and if we need to prune them again or not. So first let's start off in the greenhouse here. We've got some things popping. We can see most all of our determinate tomatoes have germinated. That trailer looks nice and full. I'll thin that out in the next day or so. We got a couple doubles there. We'll thin those out and get it to one seedling per cell. Our Ruiz Okri germination test here is going pretty good. A little bit of um, kind of variable germination time on these, which sometimes is expected when you're dealing with some heirloom seeds, but we're getting a decent amount of them popping through. Still wait another probably four or five days before we can actually calculate what percentage of these seeds germinated, but we're getting a decent amount popping through there, so probably got some somewhat viable seeds there, worthy enough to uh, give away to some of you guys. And then our first round of peppers and tomatoes here looking really good. Probably in the next week or so we might step up these tomatoes here to those two inch pots that we're going to use. So everything in the greenhouse is looking pretty good so far. Now let's do some stuff we've never done before. So if you've been following along you know we did some turmeric in these little tartar fire ring raised beds. I think we planted them last summer sometime and then we harvested them not too long ago. And we got a decent amount here. We'll talk more about the turmeric later. But we have one of those little fire rings that doesn't have anything in it right now. And I've had several people asking about growing horseradish and I even had one viewer who sent me a picture said he picked up a big root from Fresh Market or Whole Foods, one of those kind of grocery stores, and he was going to plant it. And I said, hey, I'll give it a try too. So we were eating in Tallahassee the other night, and there's a Fresh Market there. So I said, let's go there and see if they've got a horseradish root. We'll try to plant some, see if we can grow it in one of these little raised beds. So that's what I have right here, a big honking horseradish root. Now I've also looked online at places that sell horseradish to grow and I found a couple bulk suppliers but nobody that really sells small amounts of it and those that they sell look like little slivers they look a lot different than this so just doing some research online looking at some different videos seeing how to plant this and I think I've got it figured out it seems pretty simple so we're going to give it a try from what I understand this stuff can be pretty invasive and so you don't want to just plant it in the middle of your garden with a bunch of other stuff you want to plant it in kind of a contained area so these raised beds should work pretty good for that so here's our little raised bed set up currently and this one we've got some snapdragons they look nice and healthy no blooms on them abram wanted to plant those so we put those in there this is where the turmeric was and there's nothing in there now but a weed or two and some old plant debris and in this one we've got some thyme and some garlic chive stubs over there. They're just kind of hanging in there. And I'll probably this spring add a few more of these. I'll probably add at least three more of them. Just kind of in front of these or parallel with these. And put a lot of my herbs in there. I think it'll work better than putting them in the garden like we did last year. It's just a little easier to contain them and take care of them. I'm liking these little fire rings here. I wish they were a little cheaper than they are but uh, they do work really well and they seem like they'll hold up forever so we'll probably add a few more of those but today we need to put something in this middle one right here now before we plant this let me scratch around in here and make sure i didn't miss any of the turmeric there might still be some in here oh i thought i saw some there for a second there we go oh i did miss a little bit not a lot but there's some right there. I think that might be all of it. Okay, so we got some nice well drain. I think this is the jungle grow mix we put in here. Now, when I saw this root here, and I don't know if you can see it, it's got some sprouts on it there. I was thinking, huh, 
you should probably cut this thing up into pieces and plant all the little pieces but everything I saw online or the videos I saw people were just planting this big honking thing right here and I didn't find a whole lot of good instructions on how to do this but everybody seemed to say that you want to plant this thing at an angle so kind of in the soil like that and with this end facing up it's the way I saw one guy do it so that's the way we're going to try it we'll see if it works or not so let's just dig us a deep enough hole here I'll put that puppy in there like that at an angle we'll cover it up Get a little bit of turmeric there and we'll see what happens I might mound the soil up over there where I um, buried it just a little bit and we'll just wait and see what happens see if it sprouts or not from what I understand these things are pretty easy to grow once they kind of take in the soil so hopefully we get lots of good horseradish here and if any of you out there are experienced horseradish growers and have any good tips definitely share those with me in the comments below so now let's talk about the turmeric here so just in that little raised bed we were able to grow quite a bit of turmeric we just had like a little handful that we planted and we ended up with a bunch we probably had I don't know two to three times this amount here Brooklyn dehydrated a lot of it ground it up it's got it in a little jar in the pantry there she's putting in the smoothies all kind of different stuff a lot of good health benefits to turmeric uh, from what I understand we have this much here that we can replant this is probably too much for a little raised bed so I want to try to put this in a row in the garden but I got to pick the right spot from what I understand turmeric likes a little bit of shade and it gets that here in this raised bed alongside this barn there's a pecan tree right above us here so it gets a little bit of shade so I can't pick a spot right out in the open or I don't think I should pick a spot right out in the open in complete direct sun all throughout the day but I think I've got a good little spot we can put it let's get a little shade on it so right here on the edge of this plot this clover plot where we had our chickens grazing we're starting as these pine trees grow and these are not my pine trees by the way as these pine trees grow it shades the side of this plot more and more every year and so the end of this kind of clover plot here is pretty shaded for the most part kind of all throughout the day it gets a little bit of sun so i think i can cultivate me a little spot here and put my turmeric on the end and then we'll still have plenty of room to put all our glass gym corn come spring now you might be thinking well isn't turmeric more of a warm season plant why are you planting it right now when it's still cold outside well i've had this sitting in this bag in the fridge for about a month maybe a little more now and i was just worried about how long it would store that way it seems to be storing pretty well so far everything still feels you know texture of it still feels like it's good to plant but i don't want to lose all this turmeric and from what I understand, you could go ahead and put it in the ground and it will just not sprout till things warm up. So I'd rather it be in the ground than in this bag where it may eventually go bad in the fridge. Now we keep our fridge temp pretty low. We have several fridges, but a couple we just keep vegetables in and we turn the temp down. You know, we don't have it real cold in there and it seems to store pretty well like that but like I said I don't want it to go bad I don't want to lose this much turmeric so I'm going to go ahead and put it in the ground and then it will sprout whenever things warm whenever it gets ready to sprout if it does sprout and then we get a late freeze I've got some road cover I can cover it with so I'm gonna go grab the tiller and just till me a sliver right here just maybe one or two tiller widths right here on the end of this clover plot where we can put that turmeric All right, so we got us a little strip cultivated there. Went through that a few times with the tiller. Then we took the wheel hoe and made us a little plant and furrow there. Had to go through that twice as well because there's a lot of cover crop stubble in there. Then we put some of that Nature Safe 855 in the furrow there. Give a little pre-plant fertilizer. And I probably won't do it today, but tomorrow the next day, I'll put some wheat straw along this cultivated spot here just to help keep 
this clover and stuff from coming back. All right, so now we need to break up our turmeric for planting. Now, one video I saw, they said to pull these pieces right here off and replant these roots right here. But last year when we did it, we were just planting little pieces like this. Now, I also was trying to find something that told me how small a piece we can plant. It seemed like last year, the pieces we planted were pretty tiny. So I think we can break those off and just plant like that right there. Maybe that right there. I don't want to break them off too small. Like I don't know if I can plant that. We may just leave this hole or maybe break that in half there and plant those two pieces. So we're just going to kind of break this up into little pieces here that we can plant. And hopefully they'll all sprout. So we had a helper show up. I just came out here looking for you, but I have now been You're going to get put to work. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what we got there when we kind of chopped it up or broke it apart. I think that's way more than we need for this 40 foot row. So we might find another spot to plant something, but at least we got plenty. So we're going to put these in here about, I don't know, six, to eight inches apart or so. We ain't going to be super exact with it. Is that good? And from what we noticed last year when we planted this, the orientation, it's not like planting taters where you got to plant them eyes up. The orientation of the little pieces doesn't really matter a whole lot. So we're just going to kind of drop them in the furrow here as Brooklyn walks along it. Oops. Do you want to tell them about your turmeric smoothies you've been making? <laughs> um, that is strong. I had taken it as a supplement, but never like in a smoothie like that. And it's got some bite to it. So I would say start off very small. So it doesn't take a whole lot? No, like a teaspoon. So when you dehydrated it and you just had what, like a quarter of a pint mason jars worth, you was like, yeah. man, I didn't get a whole lot. Yeah, and then you don't need a whole lot. I needed a tiny little um, mesh, what's it called? Like colander, like the really tiny one. Yeah. That would help me get the bigger pieces and it would probably be even smoother. Oh, so it's not ground up real fine? Right, right. And if they had told me to do that, this recipe I've read, but I just, um, I didn't have one. And I thought, it'll be fine. But you need one. You're doing a good job dropping oh, those you. in there. That's a hard job. Yeah. <laughs> you clearly picked the most qualified person to do it. <laughs> so I was thinking since we had so much, more than enough for that row, I might squeeze in another row right here on the edge of this plot. Probably won't do it today, but that looks like that'd be a good spot right there between the edge of this plot and them rutabagas right there. This gets plenty of shade as you can see. So we might do one more row right here when we can compare planting them here versus planting them over here. I don't know what we're gonna do with this much turmeric. I think we should sell some. We'll figure out a way to do something with it. We had a lot of people asking about where do you get it to plant and stuff, so maybe we'll good, yeah. have enough we can put some on the website and share. Because we got so much plant debris in here from that clover and stuff, I don't think the wheel hoe would do a great job closing this up, so I'm just gonna do it by hand with the rake here. And like I said, probably tomorrow so i'll come out here and put some wheat straw over this entire kind of cultivated band here and uh, hopefully keep this stuff from growing back too much ideally you'd want to cultivate it and wait a little bit but we didn't do that today we're just doing it all in one day okay so good to get that one row of turmeric planted this is what we have left here just to show you so plenty enough for another row there so yeah that's i'll a put lot. this back in the fridge for another day or so when i get some time i'll plant the other row we'll keep you updated on the progress of that and how that goes it should be in the ground for quite a while because mm -hmm. uh, last year it grew for quite a while so we get it going hopefully it'll come up in spring and then grow throughout the summer maybe into the fall ours last year never flowered maybe oh, plant, flowers that's what some people say okay maybe planting it earlier it will flower mm -hmm. i don't know we'll see we'll get to compare it growing in the raised bed versus in the ground and see which one we like better yeah good deal now let's talk about these brussels sprouts here are you excited about these brussels sprouts Love brussels sprouts listen we've had a many years where we got real hyped up for brussels sprouts every week i go to the grocery store and i was like nope don't buy those brussels sprouts we're about to have some just to come find out we ain't got none yeah we had so. we have failed on brussels sprouts <laughs> got like 
like three. We have failed more times than we have succeeded, but it looks like this year uh, we might have done it. So let's show you what they look like here. And then I think we're gonna prune them up one more time okay. to try to make the sprouts that are on there, try to make mm. the plant devote more energy to the sprouts as okay. opposed to the side leaves. Yeah. We'll see. All right. Before I show you those sprouts, I want to show you my English peas here that have finally germinated. These things had me really, really worried because they took about a week and a half to start popping, but we've got really good germination on them now. We've got double rows here filling in pretty good. So I feel a lot better about that now, but man, I was worried about it for a while because it seemed like they took way longer than they were supposed to, to germinate, but we got peas now. And as far as our Brussels sprouts go, now not all of them look great. We do have a few plants that have just bit the dust for whatever reason, like that guy and that guy there. But the plants that do look good have some pretty good looking sprouts on them. We can see the sprouts a little bit better when we trim them back in a bit. Let me get in close right here, see if I can show you. See, that looks pretty good right there. If the light will get in there so you can see it. So we're getting some nice sprout development. These aren't super tall. They're only about a foot, a foot and a half tall, but we'll take what we can get at this point. Now here's one that we trimmed back so you can see it a little bit better there. So we've done this once already and it all kind of grew back. Maybe it was a little too early when we did it the first time. But the goal here is to chop off these side leaves here so that the plant will devote more energy to the sprouts as opposed to those leaves there. So I think today we're gonna to do that one more time and see if that helps any. And I'm going with a larger weapon of choice this time as opposed to last time I used my Benchmade here. With this big kitchen knife, I think it's gonna give me a little more power and make it a little more easier. So I got this puppy sharpened and we're just gonna come through here and chop off these side leaves. Leave the top ones. Just kind of clean them up like that. Kind of like those guys you see trimming Christmas trees. That should be good right there. And hopefully that'll make those sprouts there fill out a little bit better. Now, I don't know if it looks like it on camera, but that right there is pretty dang fun. So for the plants that have survived along these two rows here, we got them pruned up there. I don't know if they'll get any taller or not, but hopefully this little trick works. I've heard it works pretty good. And so we'll see how much the sprouts fill out now. We'll probably rake up all these leaves here in a minute. Go put those in our compost bins, but just a few more weeks I think on the Brussels sprouts let them fill out a little bit more and then we should be able to enjoy them. So we still haven't figured out how to grow those big three foot tall stalks of Brussels sprouts like I see some of those guys over in California grow but we didn't get skunked. Even if our stalks are only a foot, foot and a half tall we've got sprouts on them so we're gonna have something to eat. And I need to get out of this cold wind before my ears fall off. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Don't forget to let me know what you know about growing horseradish, any tips or tricks you might have. If I did it right, if I did it wrong, let me know in the comments below. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to go check out our affiliate links below. Also go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com, where we've got recipes, our garden journal, recommended products, Lazy Dog Farm merch, and more. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like and share, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Overwhelmed well, mm -hmm, by the beauty of your life.